A group dedicated to abortion access says within hours of Roe v. Wade being overturned, they suddenly felt like they were a travel agency booking ticket after ticket for people to come to Colorado for abortions. Our Anusha Roy looks at the potential legal liability of getting people into our state for that medical care. For the last week, it feels like everyone has been in panic mode. Amanda Carlson works with Cobalt, focused on abortion access and reproductive rights. My body, my she said after the Supreme Court's decision, the ripple effect was felt right away. Our caseload has tripled. That meant the organization is flying in more people into the state to get abortions. Have been booking flights, hotels, um, cash reimbursement for gas, child care, baby formula, diapers. Many of the folks we serve um, are low income. They live in rural areas with limited access to health care. They are already parents. Uh, many of them are, are young. Uh, some are experiencing homelessness. But hanging over this work are concerns about legal troubles. Make sure that their staff are safe and not un undertaking uh, liability. In Colorado, advocates at Cobalt feel protected because of state law that safeguards the right to an abortion. Our Nine News legal expert says if a person from out of state is seen by a provider, given medication, or goes through a procedure here. Here in Colorado, Oh, definitely any doctor will be safe from prosecution. Whitney Trailer says even if someone did try to prosecute a person from Colorado in another state, that would require extradition and cooperation between states. There would be states fighting with each other, which we have happened now with certain crimes and folks are trying to extradite yeah. folks. That cooperation might be tricky. Colorado's attorney general says that he will protect people seeking an abortion no matter where they live and protect medical professionals. But those who are applauding the Supreme Court's decision, like the Catholic Church in Colorado wrote, they are profoundly sad and distressed about more women coming to Colorado for abortion. So advocates and providers are relying on state law for protection. At the same time, several pro-life groups are joining together to fight that same state law. They're preparing for the 2024 ballot that includes gathering signatures and working on legislation to restrict abortion access. Another group said that while the ballot is something they're discussing, they are also focusing really on outreach and education about resources for people navigating a pregnancy. Of course, Kyle, right, we've seen several attempts before to restrict abortion access that have failed with voters multiple times here in Colorado. Coloradans have been really clear on that over the years. So Anusha, I know that Republican elected officials down in Texas have said that with abortion illegal there, they're looking now to prevent people in Texas from leaving that state to get abortion. So what happens say, if, a, if a doctor here is consulting with somebody in Texas via like telehealth or the phone? Right, and it's a really interesting gray area right now, right? If, if that initial consultation is done on telehealth, the person still has to come to Colorado for the medication for that procedure. So that gives the provider some protection. The question that our legal expert says is what is gonna be that legal battle about people crossing state lines, getting an abortion, going back to a state that says it's banned, as well as states debating, you know, do we try to stop help via telehealth? Honestly, it's it's confusing. There aren't a lot of really great answers right now. And Whitney was saying it's ultimately going to be battled out in court. Uh, one reason why you see people who advocate for abortion access telling folks who are just interested in the cause, don't involve yourself in this legal stuff because you may not know what you're getting yep. yourself mm -hmm. into. All right, Anusha, thank you.